Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News. Now, as you might recall, about a month or so ago, I reported that Dinobots had been confirmed for Transformers 4 Age of Extinction. And there was a rumor going around that Optimus Prime and company would be riding them into battle, which offended many of you. In fact, I remember somebody wrote in the comments section, nobody rides Grimlock, and a whole bunch of you had given it the thumbs up. Well, it's a dark day because photographic evidence has arisen that somebody does ride Grimlock, and it's none other than Optimus Prime. Now, this photo supposedly comes from a trade show, and somebody could just be messing with us. But what sells me on its authenticity is the scale, and that Grimlock is so much bigger than Optimus Prime, to the point where it must be to sell audiences, mainstream audiences, on the fact that Optimus Prime could ride him, and that it would make sense and, you know, actually save him time and be feasible for him to ride him. Uh, because if, they're not, if he's not going to ride him, and they're going to interact on a peer level, I don't see how it's possible when they're this big, uh, there's this big a difference between them in size. Not to mention, how are human characters going to come into play? Mark Wahlberg's like, what, the size of half of one of Grimlock's teeth? Uh, so not only does that lead me to believe that uh, Optimus Prime and company will be riding these Dinobots, but that they won't be in the movie for very long. Because I think a lot of us are already getting whiplash trying to follow these huge gina uh, ginormous characters across the screen, the IMAX screen as it is. Uh, so when you have someone like Grimlock come in, who's going to just throw the whole thing off scale, it's just not practical for them to spend a lot of time in the movie. So I think we'll have a really cool, like the Dinobots will come in, they need them to maybe traverse a lot of ground very quickly, everyone will hop on, Mark Wahlberg, maybe Mark Wahlberg's in that shot. He could be a speck of dust in terms of the scale that's going on here. And they'll, it'll be a big money shot, it'll be very exciting, and then the Dinobots will be like, okay, we're gonna go now, good luck everybody. Uh, and that's what they'll do, that'll be the sign off. Now I'm not familiar at all with Dinobots, I don't know their intellectual capacity, I don't know if they are peers or supposedly peers, with Optimus Prime and company, but I'd be curious to know what you guys think about, you know, the fact that Optimus Prime would be riding Grimlock, or do you, are you still offended by it, and how do you feel actually seeing it in action now, at least through toys? But you know what? What are Michael Bay Transformers movies but just giant uh, live-action, you know, toy movies animated brought to life? All right, so that's the first story of the day. Uh, the, the second and third story are actually related, and it's this idea of two really classic films being rebooted and remade. Uh, the first is that, of course, we've all heard the Terminator franchise is back. Uh, Megan Ellison has the rights to it, uh, you know, along with her brother, I believe. Uh, and they're the, they're the children of the Oracle founder, Larry Ellison. They just have an obscene amount of money. Uh, and they purchase the rights, and they're decided to reboot it with the Thor 2 director, Alan Taylor. Uh, and word got out uh, just the other day that they're looking for a new Sarah Connor. I find, that, I don't know, this is very difficult for me. I can understand the need because obviously Linda Hamilton can't continue with the role. Uh, and maybe if they're going to do a reboot because they want to go back to young Sarah Connor. Uh, but I feel that Linda Hamilton was just so classic in the role, I don't really see a need to go back. Now, who are they considering before we continue this discussion? Uh, they're considering Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones. Uh, she plays Daenerys. Uh, also, they're considering Margot Robbie, who is the love interest in Wolf of Wall Street and also from Pan Am. Uh, and also Brie Larson, who is more of an, uh, an indie, you know, an indie darling. She has a lot of critical acclaim, and that's why she's getting a lot of buzz. She's in the film Short Term 12 that you might have heard about. And also, if you saw The Spectacular Now, she was Miles Teller's original girlfriend in that movie. Uh, all of them, I don't, I, you know, I can't vouch for how they would do with the role. I don't know what they have in mind. I don't know if they're reimagining Sarah Connor. I don't know what's going on. None of us do, obviously. But I think that rebooting a classic film, I don't really, you know, this brings up a bigger question of when to reboot, when not to reboot. I know that reboots are all the rage, but I think if you, unless you're going to drastically change the tone of a franchise, um, like they did with Skyfall, and in Skyfall they went back to almost the origin, they did actually go back to the origin of Bond, even though it was an older Bond, but they really explored something that had never been done with the Bond franchise. They'd never shown the origin of Bond. When we met him, he was already a spy. So I think that warranted the reboot both the, you know, showing the origin story that had never been done, and also changing the tone so dramatically. But with Terminator, unless they have some really great new current idea that they're going to bring into this, I just don't see why you would remake such a classic film that I think still holds up. So my answer to be when to reboot is if you have a new idea, which modernizes it, but even then I still I feel that, mo that new idea, that new twist could be a a applied to exploring the world, that universe in other ways, or just continuing the story. But I guess if a movie doesn't hold up, if you watch it and you go, oh, this is so dated, nobody would, no, no current audience, unless they were a film buff, would want to check this out. But you could pop in T2 into your DVD or download it today, in your DVD player, Blu-ray player, and you would be blown away. It's just a flawless film, even in terms of special effects. I don't know how much the first Terminator would hold up, and of course, I think we'd all rather forget T3 and T4, but T2 is 
great enough to, I say, just continue with the story. You can explore what happened at Cyberdyne, that, uh, that guy's son from the second film, whatever happened to him. There's lots of, there's lots of room left to go. So what's so what could possibly be this other film that's like that's so amazing that makes you question whether or not Hollywood should stop hitting the reboot or, or redo button? Believe it or not, it's Point Break. Yes, they want to remake Point Break, and uh, they have such a spin on it that they're doing that this film sold out right away at the American film market, apparently, over the weekend. Everybody wanted a piece of it. They're like, we're sure this is going to be a big hit, even though you haven't cast it. Uh, so, of course, there's, of course, the original film, which is very famous. It stars Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves and was directed by Catherine Bigelow, uh, who eventually went on to be the first woman director to win the Oscar for Best Director uh, for The Hurt Locker. And it's about basically Keanu Reeves. It's a little bit like Fast and Furious, actually. Uh, Keanu Reeves is an undercover police officer uh, who goes after this gang led by Patrick Swayze who are looking for the ultimate high, the ultimate rush. And they get it from robbing banks, and they also get it from extreme surfing. So what is this new film going to do? Well, it's going to take it on a more global scale to follow this gang, which uh, looks for the ultimate high, not just on uh, the waves, but in all extreme sports. And they do it, as I said, on a global scale. So they're saying this will be like Fast and Furious, it'll be like James Bond, or perhaps Triple X. Yes, I'm, I'm sure they didn't bring that up in their, uh, their meetings with the uh, you know, distributors who wanted to buy some of the rights. But anyway, I feel that, again, Point Break was a really classic, great film. Maybe it ring. I haven't seen it recently. Maybe it does ring a little bit uh, dated if you were to watch it. So maybe I can see, maybe you'd want to redo that. But I really feel, you know, I know Shakespeare said there's nothing new under the sun, but I think there are more original ideas than this. I think Hollywood needs to stop going back and, uh, you know, mining what they the great things they've done and diluting them. You know, look what happened with Total Recall. I have some hope for uh, RoboCop, but it just, you know, move on. And I can understand that these franchises have so much money at stake, you can't let them die, but just continue the story. Uh, you know, lock your writers in a room and get some good ones and have them come up with something. All right, so those are the three stories of the day. Uh, the question comes from Sean Curoin. Uh, Curoin. And uh, Sean says, uh, quick question. Sure, Sean. What do you think of kids' TV today on channels such as Disney Channel and Nickelodeon, etc.? I personally think kids' TV today is awful and is just dumbing down all the children who watch them. I'm 12 and hate those channels. The executives or whoever must or whoever must think kids are incapable of using their brain. It's seriously so annoying. And then Sean goes on to say that he loves Beyond the Trailer, by the way. And Sean, I really appreciate that. And I think you also answered your own question a little bit there. Uh, I think that when you're in that middle ground between child and adult entertainment, I think you know when to make the jump. And even though you're 12, obviously a very advanced 12, uh, you feel it's time to go into the adult shows. And they're there for you to watch. Uh, I do wish there was more of a middle ground, but you'll see this existing in comics as well. When I was uh, reading comics, I had to jump from Uncle Scrooge and Archie to mainstream you know, DC and Marvel comics. There isn't that in between, like a show like Young Justice, which can really help bridge the gap. Now, of course, you're really going to touch a nerve here, Sean, and that a lot of people, fans young and old, feel that there was some great animation, but Cartoon Network just canceled all of it. Uh, you know, and of course, the Bruce Timm age of Batman the Animated Series, then Superman, and then Justice League was really phenomenal stuff, and they haven't been able to replace that. Uh, now, someone might step in and say that the movies kind of do that, but I still feel that not only because the movies are just basically retelling uh, comic book stories that I think people should be encouraged to read, but... Um, I just feel they aren't, they aren't, you know, bringing anything new to the, they're just, I think that today animated uh, comic book movies are just outreach tools to new audiences. And I guess there's some merit in that, but I would be, I would question what the conversion rate actually is. And I bet it would be higher if they made up original stories to tell. Uh, I think that would be much more interesting and compelling because if you're telling someone to go watch uh, something uh, and they like it and then you're like, but wait, why read a comic? You're just going to read what you just watched. Of course they're not going to jump over. You have to say, you have to entice them with another new story that's similar to what they just enjoyed. So I think that uh, Cartoon Network, you know, uh, they, that sh channel, there's a lot of debate over whether or not they had good merchandising for those shows, which drives them, and whether or not they gave them a fair shot and that they always would not air them consistently and they wouldn't tell people when they were coming back. Uh, there's a lot of frustration, I think, with animation in general right now. Uh, but I think that's the, the main thing, though, is that there's just a huge divide between child entertainment and adult entertainment. And I think that people are growing up faster these days and can jump to the adult entertainment. And maybe there's such a small window for that adolescent entertainment, it's not worth anyone investing in. So that might be very much the case. But I do agree with you. I think that I wish that, you know, I wish entertainment took its audiences, um, you know, they had more respect for them. 
but that's why you have, you know, you know, great adult shows. And I would say, Sean, if you're looking for a really good animated show, I highly recommend Avatar The Last Airbender and the current Legend of Korra series, which is on season two right now. That is top-notch entertainment, which I think is very sophisticated and is really all ages and does a very good job of being all ages. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. Thank you for asking it. Uh, that's today's morning movie news. You can comment down below on the three stories as well as that viewer question. And let me know what you'd like to see covered tomorrow as well as any questions you might have that you want answered. Thanks for watching. Bye.